Okay, I'm going to show you how we can hardwire a dash cam into the rear view mirror power. Now this process should work for any dash cam that has a power input that looks like this. Mini USB, because that means it takes five volts for input. And any car that has wires going into the rear mirror the one in the center because uh, that is going to be 12 volts. So the first thing you're going to need is an adapter to convert that 12 volts to 5 volts. So here's one here that I I got on Amazon. It was about $10. So you input 12 volts DC, outputs 5 volts BC. Now um, it comes with, on the output side, actual correct connector. This is a mini USB connector and this one has a right angle. Um, I chose this one so that when it was connected to the camera the cable will be out of the way. You see how it um, gets in here. It uh, goes to the side there so it'll be nice and hidden. Now on the other side this is a 12 volt input. Um, you see there's a lot of wire here. I don't need all this wire. Um, this is what's going to tie into the wires that go to the rear view mirror. Now I don't need all this and I also don't want to cut the wires so I've also ordered on Amazon it's called a T-tap connector. Now they gave me 60 pieces. I only really need two but this is going to be handy. I'm going to save these for other projects. Uh, the way this is going to work is once I identify the wires that have the 12 volt going to the rear view mirror, I'm going to clamp one of these on the wire. So if this was a wire here, um, first this would be clamping on that wire like this. And then you have a second piece here that's called a spade connector that slides into here. So this piece has to go on the wires here and um, that will be it. It will be completely modular. No soldering, no cutting wires um, or anything difficult like that. So the tools you're going to need for this job will be uh, a pair of pliers, one of these. That's uh, to connect this to the wire. Um, you're going to definitely need a voltmeter. Um, doesn't have to be this sophisticated. And along with that, you're going to need two metal paper clips. Now, this is going to be used, we'll see later, to find out, make sure we have the right wires on the rear view camera and we're tapping into the right voltage. And you're going to need some wire strippers, likely. Also, um, for this application, I'm going to use some two-sided Velcro tape. That's so that I can take this piece here and Velcro it to the back of the rearview mirror so that the insulation will be nice and tidy. So the first thing I'm going to do here is shorten this wire and put these spade connectors on. Be back in a minute. Okay, you see I've made it much shorter, the wire here. I've stripped off about a half inch from both the red and the black. Um, and now I'm going to crimp on this spade connector. So you want to, if you look inside here, there's a, there's a small hole. We're going to get the, make sure that we um, get all the wire inside the metal piece, but none of the cover to the wire because we're going to clamp down on it and we want it to make a nice good connection. You also, so you don't want to stick it in too far but you want to stick it in enough so that when we grab on it's going to make a metal to metal contact. And you also don't want metal outside so we don't want to have a short. Now it's likely that there's already a fuse on whatever wire we're going to tap into. So I'm not concerned about making a fuse, using a fuse in this case, because there should be one already in place. So there, I just clamped it, and you see it doesn't pull out. 
Um, and I'll do the same side. I'm going to use a different color here so we can get the red and the... don't have a black, but yellow is so commonly used for ground. Oh, it looks like this is actually a different size wire, so we're not going to use the yellow. That's too big of a hole. Will not clamp down. Didn't realize when I bought that it was for different size wires. And the blue is somewhere in the middle. I don't know if I want to use two red. I'm going to use a blue. So we're going to use a pair of blue instead of yellow. Because this wire is quite um, high gauge, very small wire. Put that in here. You can see through the plastic, I didn't go too far. Clamp it. My pliers. Okay. Nice and tight. So how this is going to work is that once I identify the wires on the rear view mirror, they're going to supply the 12 volts and the ground. I'm going to actually clamp this onto one of the wires like this. So there'll be a wire there. I'm going to clamp it in and close this. So I didn't have to strip any of this wire, it just clamps on there. And then this blue spade piece will slide right in and make a nice connection just like that. And that's how I'll get the 12 volts here. And then the 5 volts will come out and I just plug it right into my camera. And all this will be, uh, take. I'll take my Velcro here, stick it on the back, and stick this to the back of the rearview mirror and there'll just be a very short wire. Hopefully everything will be hidden. Uh, from view and it'll be nice and neat. Now why would you want to do this? Now normally these cameras come with uh, a very long wire like this to so plug it into cigarette 12 volt port and then you run a long piece of wire up into the frame and hide it. Um, it's not difficult to do that uh, and then you plug it into the camera but the um, Reasons why you might not want to do that is you might not want to take up that 12 volt outlet. In my case, the car that this is going into, that 12 volt outlet is always on. And I don't want the camera to be always on because I'm afraid that would, that would drain the battery. Um, some people will want the camera always to be on if they're using their car a lot. Not worried about the battery being drained. Um, it would continue running, shooting video. Um, so if you're parked out on the street and you want to make sure your car's safe, that might be something you desire. But in our case, um, we don't want to, so that's why we're going to use this method and um, hardwire it to the rear view mirror. So next, what you'll see is uh, inside the car. Okay, we're in the car. I'm going to show you the back of the rear view mirror here. There's actually two modular connections. This one goes to the GPS antenna. It's probably not power in there. We're not going to look at that. We're going to take out this other big one here. It's connected directly to the mirror. Now, it's just a little thing I had to push here, and it comes right out. And we're going to look to see if we can figure out which one the ground wire is. Now, typically it's black. It might be thicker than other cables. Uh, so I'm guessing here it's going to be this pin right here, the first one. So what we're going to do is assume that's the ground wire, and then we're going to get our tester here and figure out which pin will have the 12 volts. Now we want to make sure we get the 12 volts only when the car ignition is on not when it's off. So right now the car keys are out of the ignition and we don't have power so I'm going to put the car keys in. And um, yeah I said in a before that you could use a paper, cl paper clip but it's a little bit dangerous with the more exposed metal so I have these little jumpers here it makes it safer so I'm not gonna 
have less of a chance of uh, shorting anything out. So what I'm going to do is, what you do is you go pin by pin to figure it out. I'm going to start here at the opposite one. I have my meter here. So with the off position, the meter says zero. Turn the ignition. Oh, there we go. It's 12 volts. So the car isn't started, but it's in the accessory position. Now I turn it off. And I took the keys out. Now you notice that the lights are on, so this is, it's going to stay on until probably you open the door. That's when, um, I see my radio is also on, but when I open the door, that goes off. And you see the voltage also goes down to zero. So those are the two wires we want. And now the next step is going to be to clamp on the blue to the ground wire blue connector here and the red to the looks like it's a blue wire coincidentally enough so it doesn't look too hard let me get the red clamp want it right there. This is just going to kind of grab the wire. Okay, I might need pliers for this. I'll be back. Okay, I got the red one on and now I'm doing the blue one on the ground. Make sure the wire is in where it needs to be hold it and then grip it and then these should clasp like that and they're all good so I'm gonna do one one more check here just to make sure I did not cut through the wire that would be bad make sure we still have power on the pins for the mirror mirror has auto dimming or your mirror could have a compass or something like that that needs power turn on my voltmeter to 12 to uh, DC voltage okay that's good we still have 12 volts Now we are ready to unplug this. We don't have to plug this back into the mirror yet, just to test it. We're still gonna have power here. We're gonna plug in our converter that gets us from 12 volts to five volts. Okay, we got the adapter connected and a Velcro piece on the back of the mirror. So I'm going to put this piece right here. And then we have the 5 volt end here. We're going to plug into our camera. And now when we turn the key, the uh, camera comes right on. Now as long as this camera doesn't draw too much voltage, this, sh this should work. If you have a more complicated camera that needs more amperage more power there might not be enough power in here but uh you can see it works for this camera and uh, when i turn off the key and open the door the power will go off now a lot of these cameras have uh either a capacitor or a small battery in them so that they can save the video uh without making it corrupt so they they can do a normal shutdown but you see after a few seconds that shuts down so the only thing left to do is kind of straighten this up maybe get some ties and make it nice and neat so that you won't really be able to see see any of the wires that's it we're done